Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so very much for joining me once again for Tea Time. I really appreciate you being here. So today we're gonna to be talking about lenses and some call it the Holy Trinity. For me, it's the Holy Pentagram. This isn't religious connotation, but it is, for me, a pentagram of lenses and not a trinity. And I'm going to get into that a little bit in a few minutes. So today is a lens day, and I'm going to show you mine. I want you to show me yours, or at least tell me what you use in the comment area below this video, because we all learn from each other. So what sparked this conversation is basically in the comment area of the last five, six, ten videos, we've been talking a lot about new cameras and new camera systems. And a lot of people have said, oh, well, this system doesn't have enough lenses. Now, this holds true with a lot of systems that start out, right? Brand new. We're talking about the EOS R, the RP. We have the Nikon Z6, the Z7. We now have Olympus. We have Panasonic with their S1, their S1R. <sighs> There's a lot of new systems out there, right guys? A lot of new systems. Now, Sony had the same problem when it first came out with their A7, right? The A7 came out, there was like no glass, and people were like, what are we gonna do with this? And they were having to marry their old glass to it using an adapter. We don't have that problem anymore if you're a Sony shooter, right? They have all the glass that you need for the most part. Anyways, what we're gonna do is look at the lenses that I use and why I use them and then get into what possibly you use. Now, to begin with, I do use that Trinity, that beginning, but remember, I go by the Holy Pentagram and I'm gonna show you these five and why I use them. So let me start out with the 16 to 35 F 2.8 nice and wide. I use it for landscape work. If I'm going outside, I want to shoot stuff really wide. I love 16 on a full frame. It is nice and wide, wide enough. I don't like the whole barreling look of, for example, an ultra, ultra wide like a fisheye. I just don't like the look. So a 16 to 35 would be my basis, my wide angle, let's call it. Next comes the 24 to 70. That is a mainstay of mine. I use it for almost all of my event work. It is the 24 to 70 L glass. It is a, once again, F 2.8. Now, if you have an APS-C camera, the equivalent to 24 to 70 would be like 17 to 50, 17 to 55, somewhere right around there. You can do the math. So take your crop, which would be 1.5 or 1.6, and multiply it by your millimeters, and you're going to end up with that number. So let's call it 17 to 55. Now, next after that comes the 70 to 200. That is a mainstay also of mine. I shoot it for events, and I also shoot it for portraits. Now, in the event setting, usually I'm sitting at about 70 to 100 millimeters, but if I'm using it for portraiture, I'm normally up at around 180 millimeters. That is that lens's sweet spot. It is absolutely gorgeous, and that's what I use it for. Now, before I go any further, you hear me saying f2.8, f2.8, f2.8. I do not use variable F or meandering F glass. Nothing where that F stop is changing based on your zoom. So you'll take some of the cheaper lenses and they'll start out at like F 3.5 and then you zoom in, you're sitting at like F 6.3. <sighs> I am a manual shooter. I do not shoot in aperture priority. I do not shoot in shutter priority. I do not shoot for P for professional. I do not do any of that. I shoot manual. I've started out with film days and I've always shot manual. That's just the way I work. I like manual, so I want to know what I'm going to get. I want to know that if I'm zoomed in or zoomed out, the bokeh is going to be the same and my exposure is going to be the same, right? It's not going to change all the time based on where I'm sitting in the lens, either wide or all the way zoomed out in telephoto. I don't like that. My recommendation is to always buy a constant f-stop lens, nothing that meanders around. You're going to pay more and they're going to be slightly heavier, but it's just a better piece of glass and you're going to end up with better photos, more consistent photos, let's call it. So let's keep going into this pentagram of lenses. We have the three so far, the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200. Next comes that quick 50. I love a quick 50. It could be an F 1.2, an F 1.4, or for me, I really like the plastic disposable junky Canon F 1.8. Why is that? I really don't know why the images I just love, but I just love them. They just look cool. 
It's just a really nice feel with that lens. It's not super sharp. It just makes for a really nice picture, number one. Number two, the glass itself, or plastic is really what it is. It's got glass optics, but the whole lens itself and the mount is plastic, but it costs like $89. So I break it, you throw it in the garbage and you buy another one. And number three, it is so lightweight, you don't even know it's on the camera. And I should say something else, number four, is that instead of having a zoom that you're zooming in and out of the client, let's say, with your lens, using your feet for a zoom just makes for a better experience. You can really kind of interact with the subject a little bit more. And I like the idea of just being able to get in and out. It's a little bit for me creative. I can get in there and move around and make the images a little bit different in comparison to just zooming in, zooming out. I like to change things up a little bit. So that is what I like. I like it for the creativity. I like it that it's lightweight. I like it for its price. Really good. Now, next for me, and finally, the fifth on that pentagram of lenses that I have to have is a macro lens. Now, I had a Canon 100 millimeter macro for the longest time, f2.8, obviously. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But I tried out a Tamron 90. It was an f2.8, and I just fell in love with it. I absolutely, the images out of that Tamron 90 were just, so sharp, blistering sharp. They were sharper than the Canon equivalent, the 100 millimeter macro. So I ended up selling the 100 millimeter Canon and I kept the Tamron 90. So those are the five lenses or that pentagram that I absolutely require. So once again, the 16 to 35 I have over there, but the 24 to 70 looks like this, just so you can see it. That is the 24 to 70 f2.8. The next one is the 70 to 200. Let me show you that. That is the 70 to 200. I use this all the time for a ton of portraiture as well as event work. After that, you have your plastic lens. There it is. Weighs absolutely nothing. This is the 1.8 quick 50. Look at that plastic backside to it. You just got to love a mount that's just plastic. I don't even know. Like I said, this thing is just, I don't know. I went through a few of them. I break them. I throw them away. But the images that this thing makes, is just, it's just fun. It's one of those things that's just fun to work with. It makes you more creative to me. And finally is that macro piece of glass. This is the Tamron F2.8, 90 millimeter. This is the sharpest lens that I own. Now, if this is, which is amazing, considering I have thousands of dollars of L glass from Canon here, there, back, everywhere, all right? But this is still the sharpest piece of glass that I own, and it is a Tamron. Who would have figured? But it is the case. Now, let me get into a couple of other lenses, and these I call more specialty glass. Now, some people need, for example, a tilt shift. So you might want to get like a 17 millimeter F4 tilt shift by Canon. Maybe you need something longer. You're doing some birding or some, maybe some sports stuff and you need like a bazooka like this. This is a 300 millimeter. Once again, it's a constant though, F4. Maybe you need something like this. Whatever the case might be, there is specific pieces of glass. Now, some people absolutely love for portraiture an 85 millimeter, like an 85 1.2, an 85 1.4, whatever. I don't use it very often, so I ended up selling mine years back. I personally use either the 50 millimeter or the 70 to 200, or if I'm doing a man and I want him to be really gritty and kind of just, let's say rough, maybe I wanna put dirt on him or whatever, I'll go with that 90 macro for that portrait. And it's unbelievable. Like I said, it is sharp. So, so tack sharp. You'll see every grain of dirt, every pimple. It's just amazing. Remember one thing, guys, always get it right in camera. Always take the sharpest image that you can in camera. And then later on, if you need to reduce that sharpness, make certain areas a little bit more blurry, it's easy to do. But to go in reverse, make a blurry image sharp after the fact in post-production is next to impossible. So you want to get things sharp. So for me, I use that product that I made, which is the Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool. I will calibrate my lenses to whatever I use them for. For example, my 70 to 200. Most of the time, I use this at 180 millimeters for doing that portraiture work. 
So I will calibrate it at 180 millimeters if the camera only allows one calibration. Now, some of my cameras, like a 5D Mark IV, they will allow two locations of calibration, wide angle and telephoto. So I'll calibrate at 70 and I'll also calibrate at 200. But the bottom line here is always get your images perfect in camera. And then later in post-production, you can massage them to make certain areas more blurry or whatnot after the fact. You can do that. So guys, these are the lenses that I use. I call it the holy pentagram, those five lenses that I absolutely require. Now back to subject. What do you require and does the current system have those lenses? Now, like I said, you have the EOS R, the RP, you have the Nikon Z6, the Z7, the Panasonic, the Olympus, the Sony's, whatever it is. The question is, does the system have the lenses that you need for your play or for your work? Does it? Don't get all wrapped up in all of the hype about, oh, this system doesn't have enough lenses yet, or that system doesn't have enough lenses yet. Don't worry about it. Does that specific system have the lenses that you need? For me, these are the lenses that I need. A 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, a 70 to 200, a quick 50, a macro. This is it. This is what I shoot. Now, do I have specialty glass like a monster torpedo and, and a tilt shift that I rent in because I don't even own one because I don't use it a lot. I don't shoot a lot of architectural work, so I don't need a tilt shift. Okay, so there's certain pieces of glass that you might not need, so it doesn't matter if the system have it or not. So anyways, let me end by saying, what do you use? Do you have a holy trinity or do you have, like me, a holy pentagram of lenses that you use? I want to hear, and we all want to hear. Let's have this discussion. What are those lenses that are must-have? And does the system that you have or is the system that you're looking into possibly buying do they offer those? Do they have that holy pentagram of lenses that you require? That is the question, guys. That is the big million dollar question. Does it? So anyways, in the comment area, put those comments. Let's have this discussion. And as always, please, if you enjoy my content, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon. So when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com. We can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Happy shooting. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.